Welcome to today's session on uh, postgraduate programs in engineering computer and computing at the ANU. My name is Magdalena Rojas. I am the senior marketing recruitment officer at the College of Engineering Computer Science. And joining us today, I have Anesh Day. She is um, a current student of the master's program in uh, engineering and digital systems and telecommunications. I always find it really hard to pronounce that. <laughs> so uh, this session uh, will just give you an overview of um, the programs that we are, oh, oops, sorry, there you go. So what this session will cover. So we'll cover our postgraduate programs in computing, we'll cover uh, our masters of machine learning and computer vision, our programs on data science, programs in engineering. Um, I will also talk extensively about our new graduate certificates under the COVID-19 higher education relief package, which are really exciting. I'll talk about uh, the Master of Applied Cybernetics uh, from the 3AI Institute and the Cyber Mastery Program from the Cyber Institute. We'll talk a bit about scholarships as well, and then uh, we'll have a Q&A and event wrap up. So um, a little bit of housekeeping. So basically this presentation will go for 30 minutes. And uh, after that, uh, we will we'll open the floor for any questions you might have. Um, since I'll be delivering the presentation, it will be great if you can um, put your questions, if you have any questions on the chat box. And then after we're done with the presentation, um, I can just um, answer your queries or Anesh we can also jump in and answer any questions um, you might have um, while I'm going through the presentation. We'll keep it pretty um, informal. Um, and uh, I think that probably because we only we have 13 participants, we might even be able to just have like a sort of like a session conversation about um, the different questions you might have. So computing at ANU. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you this beautiful slide of this amazing building. So this building is the Hannah Newman building and it hosts the Mathematical Science Institute and the Research School of uh, Computer Science. So if you decide to do a master's in computing, you will be spending a lot of time in that building and it's beautiful. Um, so why study computing? It's a very good question. Um, so studying computing will really give you the opportunity to learn how communication systems work and um, how you can sort of um, understand how these um, highly complex systems work and uh, make the best of it. So um, at the Research School of Computer um, Science, we focus on um, computer science, computing, uh, information technology, and uh, software engineering. And our uh, uh, professionals are recognized as solid professionals who are able to drive innovation in uh, industry or in government. So nothing really now in the world that we live in, nothing, everything is embedded in the digital world. Um, so organizations are very much well aware of the shortage of um, highly skilled workers, workers that are able to work uh, and understand these uh, highly complex systems. Um, so as stated in this article that I'm sharing with you, um, why study computing is actually, yes, it's the future. So. Um, we, uh, you will be able to understand how bionic interface uh, it works, how um, you will be able to, um, for customer service experience, understand the emotional experience and Fitbits, everything, everything is computing. So if you're interested in computing, this is the place to go. So um, let's dig in our degrees. So um, the first degree is our graduate diploma in computing. So this one is a one year full-time uh, course. So it is designed for upskilling computer science and non-computer science graduates in a minimum of time. So if uh, it doesn't really require prior knowledge of computing, you will be able to uh, understand that as you go along, um, but it just provides you that knowledge in a very short uh, period of time. So in terms of the entry requirements, uh, you will need a bachelor degree with a GPA of 547 or an advanced diploma on associate degree with three years of work experience. And you must meet the ANU English requirements. I've left a link there for more information. So the degree structure is 48 units. Um, something to take into account that most courses are valued at six units. So uh, 24 units will be a semester, 48 units will be a year. Um, so that will give you sort of an example of how it works. 
Uh, this program is actually a great pathway to the Master of Computing, um, but you will need to uh, uh, keep, uh, have best a GPA of 5.7 and you will be able to grant, you'll be granted a year credit. And uh, direct entry is available for only domestic students. I left uh, a link there for information about and uh, more about the course. So, um, the Master of Computing. So, the Master of Computing um, in this program, so prospective students will develop like a, a deep knowledge and understanding of professional software development and computing practices. And um, you will be able to um, choose a specialization um, on artificial intelligence, on human centered design, in software development, data science, and machine learning. So, um, in a few slides, I'll show you the different specializations. Um, the degree structures is 96 units, and uh, your entry requirements will be a bachelor degree with a GPA of 5.7 or a GPA of 4.7 with at least three, works ex three years work experience. Um, so um, the good thing about this program is that you will be learning by doing. So um, there is a, a highly, there's a lot of projects that you will need to be doing uh, on groups, but the really exciting one that you do at the end of your degree is uh, being part of the Tech Launcher program. So um, the Tech Launcher program, oh, I can hear a little bit of, can you, um, I think I might have some participant that just is not muted, maybe, I don't know, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so the Tech Launcher is an initiative that enables students to develop research and professional skills. Uh, it's a showcase at the end of your uh, degree and uh, you will be, it's a great opportunity to meet prospective uh, um, companies to work in different industries. Um, and um, if you're interested in, uh, in knowing more about what we do at Tech Launcher, we're actually, because of the current situation, uh, with COVID-19, um, we're actually putting the event online and live. So tomorrow uh, there will be actually a session and I've left the link there so uh, you can register and see it for yourself and the different um, projects that um, the students do. So um, then uh, we're going to move into the Master of Computer Advanced. This one requires a um, slightly high ATAR so it will require a GPA of 6.7 or 5.7 with uh, five years work experience. Um, it is suitable for students who wish to enter a research and development industry and are interested in research. So it's a great pathway into a PhD. Uh, in order to secure entry to this program, you will need a cognitive discipline. So you will need a background um, on computer science, on software engineering, but other disciplines might be considered as well. Um, you will also choose an specialization um, and to remain enrolled, you must achieve a GPA of 6-7 in the first year and have the approval of a supervisor for a research project. Um, so you will complete a unit on computing research methods and that's why it's a great pathway into the PhD. Also, you will be able to access and to be part of the Tech Launcher program. So this slide sort of shows you a little bit about our different specializations on data science and machine learning, artificial intelligence and human centered and software innovation. So um, different specializations have different uh, requirements in terms of units. So I would recommend uh, going back and choosing your electives um, very carefully. Uh, in order to do that, it's very easy. You can just talk to your convener or talk to the people in student services and they will be able to uh, provide you with a path into the different specializations because it's, it can be a bit tricky. You should um, talk to them before you decide, preferably on the first year if you decide to do a specialization, just to make sure you're on the right track. So now we're gonna talk about, about the Masters of Machine Learning and Computer Vision. This is a relatively new program um, and um, it is one of our highlights uh, because actually the ANU has one of the best reputations in artificial intelligence, machine learning and computer vision in Australia. Uh, we've been the only university rated with the ARC Excellence for Research of Australia three times in a row. So if you decide to do a program with us uh, at this master, you will be um, able to work in collaboration with some of the most um, 
amazing academics um, and you will be able to in, uh, work with them in dif different research projects. Um, and you will be working directly as well with um, members and researchers from Data61. They're actually hosted in, our, in the same building. So you will be seeing them, we will be seeing them all the time. So as I said, um, you will be uh, working with world-class researchers. Um, in order to secure into this program, you also need a cognitive discipline. So electrical and electronics engineering, computer science, software engineering will be um, very important. Um, in terms of entry requirements, you will need a bachelor degree of GPA 5.7 or a bachelor degree with GPA 4.7 with uh, relevant three years of relevant work experience. Um, same as the Master of Computer Advanced, it also provides a really good pathway into a PhD. Um, and you would, if you studied a ANU Computing and Engineering degree with us or another university, uh, you may typically uh, have um, or receive one year of credit for this program. So the maximum is one year. Um, now I'm going to move into the postgraduate programs in applied data analytics, um, highly popular at this time. Um, and um, why applied data analytics? So um, these programs are designed to address a, a global shortage of graduates with skills in data analytics. Um, they're highly sought after with uh, the private and the uh, public sector, especially in government. Um, and you will be learning and learning from data scientists as well. And you can uh, really improve your data literacy and analytics expertise. Um, the one thing that is very interesting about this program is that it has a very flexible model. So it has a blended accelerated part-time mode for full-time professionals, or you can do it also on campus. You can tailor the program the way you want to. Um, you just need to talk to the convener in order to do that. Um, but um, if you want to know more about these programs, uh, we're actually hosting a session on Friday from six to seven with Kerry Taylor, who's the program convener of this program. So you can hear um, more about the different programs and you have any specific questions about the course and about the programs, it will be a great opportunity for you. And I've left the link as well there for you to register. So um, a quick overview about our programs in applied data analytics. So we have the graduate diploma and we have the masters. Um, the graduate diploma is only available, unfortunately, for inter uh, not available for international students, only domestic. Um, and uh, both have um, required different uh, GPA. So uh, a bachelor degree with honors, so GPA 47 for the graduate diploma plus work experience. And um, for the masters is slightly higher, five, seven, um, and three years of work experience. Um, as well, as I mentioned, is very flexible. So also um, it, it offers a flexible entry and exit program. So if you decide, for example, that you don't wanna commit to a master's, you can actually um, just decide to do the graduate diploma or, and it, it's easy, very easy. So as I mentioned, it's blended. So um, highly popular, so it's four days, uh, four weeks, sorry, not days, <laughs> four weeks online, one week on campus and four weeks online. So you can just do it in a very short period of time. Um, and yeah, as, as I said, flexible entry and exit pathways. So, and it uh, um, talks about three different broad streams. So it's a good mix of computer science, statistics and social sciences. So I have this one, this slide talks up a little bit about the subjects that we have, so data mining, data wrangling, or regression, regression modeling. But of course, if you wanna know more about this program, because I am not the expert, I would highly recommend talking to Carrie on Friday, or just send us an email and um, we can answer any questions you might have. So now um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about engineering at ANU. So um, why studying a Master's of Engineering? So the great thing about our college is that we focus on uh, systems engineering, which looks at a very interdisciplinary um, way of working with different areas. So um, you're not in silos, basically, you work with different things and you see the whole um, thing as a system, basically. Um, so our programs are highly focused on building um, that um, teamwork and communication skills. And um, yes, it's um, 
it's a fantastic uh, program. So um, I'll dig in a little bit more on the masters. So the entry requirements, you will need to study a Bachelor of Engineer or Bachelor of Engineer with honors with a GPA of 5.7. Different programs have different requirements. Um, but they all, the duration of the program is two years and cognitive disciplines are required to secure into depending on the program. Um, also, you will be, as the same as the Master of Computing, you will be learning by doing. So you will be able to ask uh, to do, do electives on industry-based internships or you can do research projects. Um, just talk to your convener and he can make that happen. So. Uh, in terms of different specializations, um, I might leave Aneshwa to say uh, a few things about the Masters of Engineer in Digital Systems and Telecommunications, which is the Hi, currently doing. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. So I am doing Master of Engineering in Digital System and Telecommunication, and it's a long, long name, as <laughs> Maka suggested. So yeah, I'm currently in my second year. I'll be graduating hopefully at the end of the next year. Uh, so as she mentioned that uh, it is uh, engineering here is focused a lot on system engineering particularly. So if we have in an ANU has a huge investment in system engineering as well. So instead of focusing just on your own stream, you also focus a lot on the whole whole uh, picture altogether. So we see the big picture from understanding uh, the perspective of an engineer as a whole. So we start, for example, I'll give you a small example of the project that I'm doing. Uh, so for example, if we have to talk about the metro uh, or light rail, which is ongoing project in Canberra, we first know what is the requirement and what everyone else needs out of that. And then we design everything from there. So it gives you the perspective of everyone. So that's, it's really nice thing to understand because you're like, when you the learn engineering, you should know the whole picture. I'll let Maka continue. Thanks. <laughs> I think that, that was a brilliant explanation. I couldn't put it any better. <laughs> Um, so that is the, the Master of Engineering Digital Systems and Telecommunications. Uh, we also offer the Master of Engineering Electrical Engineering, uh, Mechatronics. I've put the links there if you want to know more about them. Um, the Mechatronics one is quite popular, uh, which uh, at the moment, because it actually talks a lot about it, it, it sort of intertwined with a lot of data analytics um, and actually renewable energy as well. Um, and you can also do, as I mentioned, an industry-based internship on an individual research project. Um, whoops, sorry. There we go. Uh, photonics. So um, uh, it has um, a lot of applications in astronomy, for example, and optics in astronomy. Um, and the renewable energy, which I think this one is particularly, I don't know, I find it particularly interesting because um, you can also select different electives from energy policy and law and economics. So it, it really can provide you a very wide uh, range of um, um, areas that you can study. So um, I'm going to look a little bit about the program structure. So just give you an idea of how it works. So the first year uh, you will have a professional core sort of um, uh, courses. Um, and as in the first year, we'll also move into a technical, a technical specialization. And the second year is a very highly focused on group projects and electives and also the specialization. Um, there you go. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the professional engineering, the core program. So that's um, sort of general for all the courses. And then you move into the different specializations and the group projects. So a good question is that why do we um, study the professional practice? There's a lot of emphasis on the professional practice and it's because our courses are currently in the process of being accredited by Engineers Australia. So Engineers Australia really has a big push uh, for engineers to ha um, have effective um, team leadership skills and oral and written communication skills. So it is a requirement for, um, for the certification for the, yeah, for the accreditation of the program. So um, you will be working um, in a lot of team projects um, with really high um, academics, high level academics. So a little bit about the group project. So um, I think Aneshwa already talked a little bit about <laughs> her group project. Um, but um, as an example of the things that you can do, 
all what they're doing at the moment. So they're doing sort of wireless um, remote monitoring of uh, temperature and humidity. There's so many things that different projects, um, the public electric bike network as well. So um, yeah, possibilities are really endless in terms of projects that you can do. And you can also, as I mentioned, you can take different electives from different uh, um, areas within the university. So for example, if you feel like you have um, a knowledge gap, you can take an undergraduate, for example, elective if you want to. So it is very flexible in that sense. Um, all right, so now I'm going to talk about the new, uh, um, the new graduate certificates under the COVID-19 um, higher education relief scheme. So um, the, our college is offering two different pro uh, programs. So one is the graduate certificate of data engineering and the other one is the graduate certificate, certificate sorry, of machine learning and computer vision. So uh, for these two programs, you don't need a cognate discipline for entry, but you will be uh, required a specific eight, um, GPA to access it. Uh, unfortunately, it's only available for domestic students, um, but these programs for 2020, the feeds are going to be, on a, both are going to be on a subsidized rate of $2,500 for the four courses and uh, under a Commonwealth supported place. Um, the deadline of applications is the 6th of July, so I've left a link there for more information about them. Um, and I would highly recommend getting into them because they're actually a great pathway into our postgraduate studies, our postgraduate program, sorry. So it is class and a, as a AQF8 qualification. So if you complete the program with a GPA of five, you will uh, meet the requirements, but not necessarily the cognate requirement in order to get into the, uh, the different programs. So different, um, the different, different masters will require dif different things. So different will have different admission requirements. Um, so um, I've left a little note there about uh, what are the different requirements. So for example, you will see that for the Masters of Machine Learning and Computer Vision, you will need to meet the Cognit requirements. Um, and it's the same thing for the Masters of Engineering. Um, and you would actually be able to get credit um, from those programs in order to move into the Masters program. Oops, sorry. Um, the uh, other thing that I wanted to mention about um, the, um, these programs is that um, there were, unfortunately, at, at this point, they're only going to be available uh, for semester two. We don't know for sure if they're going to be available for semester, uh, for the first semester of 2021. Um, but um, if they are, uh, they're probably not going to be able to, they're not going to be accessible in a subsidized rate. So I would really recommend getting, if you're interested in um, this program or these programs, um, I would highly recommend to do it now. <laughs> that was the right time. Um, so um, there you go. Oh, yep. Yeah. So that's, oh, I can see a question coming, I think. Oh, yeah, that is a, uh, with a very good question. So um, that's something that I wanted to talk to you about as well, because, um, sorry, I'll just go back. They are cramped. I mean, not cramped, but you have to, so the four courses will be taught in two blocks. Each block will be consistent of two online six week courses. So um, the first introductory courses will be delivered in a six week period simultaneously. And then the two advanced courses, you will do it. So uh, it is going to be, um, this is because the advanced courses required uh, a, a completion of the other two courses. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, they need to be completed. Uh, they're a prerequisite, basically. So since each course will require 20 hours per week for studying, you will need a full-time commitment. So it will be 40 hours per week for these two block periods um, each six weeks. So if you are a full-time employee, you, this is something that you will probably need to discuss with uh, your employer. Um, and um, maybe if you're working in the government sector, it will be a good opportunity to apply for funding or maybe take some leave in order to do this. So 
I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, you, it's cramped. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, so, oh, um, going back into also the graduate certificates, uh, something that um, people um, ask about also, um, if they need any prior knowledge, so in terms of, for the graduate certificate of data engineering, it is possible to complete the program without any computing or IT studies, but um, you would need to make a strong commitment um, to follow the requirements and learn some computing skills. Um, I will be highly recommended. Now for the graduate certificate of machine learning and computer vision, you will need uh, some basic knowledge, knowledge of programming and mathematics in linear algebra. So um, also big commitment um, to know a little bit more um, about these um, topics. So now we're gonna move into um, some of our new programs, which are quite exciting. So we have the 3AI, the Masters of Applied Cybernetics. Um, this uh, is a very new program and the first cohort has just graduated, uh, will graduate in about two weeks. So it's a 1.5 one year, 1 .5 year degree, and it's delivered by the um, 3AI Institute. Um, 3AI stands for Agency Autonomy Assurance Indicators. Um, I had to read it because it's very long. <laughs> and uh, it is focused on delivering a, um, a new branch of engineering to ensure the responsible use of 3AI. So it is led by uh, Genevieve B. She's a distinguished professor, professor. She's a cultural anthropologist, a technologist and futurist. Um, quite frankly, a bit of a rock star. Um, and, <laughs> and this institute was sort of created to enable the ethical, um, ethical effective design of, three, of um, cyber systems, basically. It's a very small cohort. Um, the, and, um, they're actually looking for people in multidisciplinary skill sets. So you don't actually need to be a computer scientist or an engineer to actually um, be able to do this masters. You can be an anthropologist, you can be a, a data scientist. It, it's very open because they're actually looking for people who will bring something different and a different type of knowledge. So the um, admission requirements for this same reason are quite, actually quite different in the sense that uh, you don't, you will also be meeting some of the sort of bachelor uh, GPA requirements. But on top of that, you will also need to submit a portfolio of what you've done and uh, you, and they're very interested to get into know you personally. So you will also have an interview. Um, is it's a very exciting, the things that they're doing are really exciting. So I would highly recommend looking into their website and um, uh, signing up into the newsletter because the, uh, new, the admission, I think the application process will open very soon. Also, I would recommend following them on social media, Twitter specifically, they're very active. Um, then um, we'll move into the um, Cyber Master awesome. Program, which is part of the, oh, Anishwa, you wanted to say something? Uh, there was still a question regarding the lectures of the certificates, the lecture time of the certificates. Lecture times. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure about that. So I would uh, recommend sending me an email or I will um, put that also on the notes or contact us on marketing.kex and I'll, I'll um, contact the conveners to ask them about the lecture times. That's a good question though. <laughs> Thank you for that. So I'll move on into the Cyber Mastery Program. So the Cyber Mastery is delivered by the Cyber Institute, which is a, a strategic initiative uh, delivered in partnership with the College of Engineering and Computer Science and the National Security College. So uh, it is led by Professor Leslie Siebeck and it brings a new um, sort of approach to the challenges of cyber and cybersecurity to people, to the community and to industries and governments. Um, so it, um, it is a very exciting pro uh, program. Um, we're still working on the um, getting the new programs because it will be um, sort of, it can be taken as a standalone module 
So as part of sort of like an executive education, so you get a, a micro credential and then you can move up from the graduate uh, uh, micro credential to a graduate diploma to a master. Um, so um, we don't know yet when the applications will open, but I would um, 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 I'll put the website there. So if you have any questions um, or um, just, yes, let us know. And we'll let you know also when the applications are open for the next intake. So big question, scholarship opportunities. Um, so, um, one exciting thing that I wanted to mention is that we have a number of um, tuition fee reduction scholarships for uh, new domestic postgraduate coursework students. Um, and it, the duration of the award will be for the full um, coursework degree. Um, we have up to, I think, around 10. So, I would recommend um, applying to them or uh, trying to apply quickly to get um, um, access to these, uh, this benefit. And international postgraduate students will also have, are also eligible for a postgraduate excellence scholarship or merit scholarships. So also left the links there. So if, if you wanna um, look at the different scholarships, um, please do because um, different situations apply different things, different circumstances that so you might not know that you will be um, eligible for one. So now that I've talked to you about all of our courses, um, so the deadline for applications for semester two is the 30th of June. So you still have a few weeks. Um, the acceptance deadline is the 17th of July. These, these dates do not apply for the postgraduate programs in applied analytics because they have different intakes. So I would recommend looking at uh, UAC for the dates um, and also of course, going to Terry's presentation on Friday, so you'll know more. Um, and finally, please do get in touch with us if you have any questions about our programs. 